All right, YouTube family, real quick. I made another video when I originally built this sharpener that's got over 50,000 views. Man, if this video helps you out, please subscribe to the channel. Click the like button, drop me a comment. I'd greatly appreciate it. Let's get into the video. What's up, YouTube family? Gerald Greenlee here with Cleaning Green Lawn Service in beautiful South Georgia. Actually, a very cloudy and wet South Georgia today. Uh, I came over here to the shop. Uh, I'm going to make a video today that I think is going to be able to uh, help a lot of people out. One of the things I'm going to be releasing in the next uh, couple of weeks is uh, doing some reviews on some of the products that I have. Some of the things that I use, some of the things that I talk about, some of the things that I've had for a couple of years. Uh, by far, my my greatest video according to you who are on youtube is my 25 dollar lawnmower blade sharpener and today i'm going to give you a detailed view of that sharpener i want to say a couple of things before i do that though uh, thank you to all of you who may have watched that video and might watch this one now for some more detail um i appreciate all the comments all the feedback uh, I've had some people, uh, most people have been very complimentary. The video has over 50,000 views. Uh, that's like a third of all the views I have on Facebook out of, you know, a couple of hundred videos. I mean, it just exploded, okay? Uh, most of the comments have been, uh, thanks, appreciate you helping out. Actually, the reason I'm making this video is because a lot of the comments that I got, People are uh, sending me, people have friended me on my Cleaning Green Lawn Service Facebook page or, or, you know, liked that page and went there and sent me a message. I've had some messages sent to me on my personal page, which sometimes are hard to get because they go into a spam folder if we're not friends. I've gotten questions on Instagram, uh, questions on the YouTube video uh, about this sharpener. Now, I've had a few people, you know, uh, say, well, you know, all you did was make an all-American sharpener. Um, so, you know, and, and some people be critical, but that's okay. If you're going to be on a, a social media platform, you got to have thick skin. Uh, I thank them for watching the video, <laughs> you know, uh, listen, I'm going to say what I said in my first video. Number one, all American sharpener is not the only one that makes a contraption like this. Uh, it may have originated with them. I don't know. Number two is I said in my first video, very clearly that the all American sharpener I've never used one. I would think it's a great product. Uh, I would think that it works very well. I just know for a lot of people, 250 bucks or whatever the cost of one is now, if you can even get one uh, with the shortages, is a lot of money for some people. And some people are like me. You got to shop and you like to figure things out and get things done. So uh, with that said, I'm going to say this once again. This is not a jab at all American sharpness. I am certain they build a great product. The product that you would order from them would be much better than the prototype that I have here behind me. Now, some uh, guys, maybe gals, that have commented on the video, you've made your own. I would be willing to bet that most of you that have made your own would be better than mine. I built mine with the intent of just doing something, throwing it together, and then I might go back and kind of try to perfect it. The truth of the matter is, for over a year now, it's kept me up and running uh, with two mowers running about 15 to 20 hours a week. I basically put a fresh set of blades on the mowers every day. It's done what I needed to do, so I haven't went back and modified it. I could make a much better product, you know, if I put $50 into it. Uh, so anyway, uh, I, I'm just saying that as kind of a disclaimer. i got to have my coffee, man. But I hope that this video, this video is an attempt to answer questions that I've been getting about how to build it uh, on the YouTube channel. So I'm going to give you the information that I have and, uh, you know, you can do with it what you want to do. So let's get into the video. Okay, the very first thing that you're going to notice if you watch the original video is that uh, 
Well, first of all, I'm using my GoPro this time and not my phone. Uh, a handful of people were said, hey man, good video, but you had the phone turned the wrong way and it was shaky and I admit it was, it really was. Uh, one of the things I've come back and added is this clamp. So these clamps I got on Amazon. I think I got a pack of three or four of them for like $10. I don't know. Uh, let me just show you though how that works. So see, I set the blade in. That is like a 12 millimeter socket. It fits perfectly for my blade to sit over. Of course, I got my blades are all the same width, so I got these in there to keep them from moving. See? And then I do this number. Hear that lock? Hear that? That bad boy is locked down. Now, the whole thing is moving because I brought it out here because there's not enough light inside the shop for you to see it. It's just screwed down with two screws to this little temporary workbench. So that does a good, that's a lot better than an old screw running it in and out to hold a blade down. So that, but in order to put this on there, I had to put a bigger piece up here to mount all of that on. And so that's what I've done here. Uh, I mounted that to the top of that four by four that you see in the original video, okay? Now, uh, what I'm gonna do is set the camera back and I'm gonna give you some actual measurements. Who wants some measurements? All right, this is what we got. First of all, this block, uh, the height of this block, the total height of this block, now that doesn't really matter, but what you would need is a block that's at least seven inches long. So seven inches long, 32 degree angle this way, there's also a 32 degree angle on the base. Now, why did I put a 32 degree angle on the base? Because when I'm standing here, and I don't know how well you can see it in the video, but when I am in the work area, it is all tilted back towards me. It's not up like this, okay? It's tilted. And so that just helps me from an ergonomical standpoint, uh, you know, to, to do that. So seven inch block, uh, long end to long end, cut on 32 degree angles. Again, if you don't have a, a miter saw, you can probably find somebody who's got a wood shop. Uh, they would probably cut it for you for free. You could use a six by six. You could put two two by fours together. There's all sorts of things that you could do. I used what I had available. My platform on top is a six by eight. That is, it's six inches this way, it's eight inches that way, and it's screwed down to that four by four that holds everything that I have here, okay? Now, let's talk about the, uh, the actual... Um, the actual arms and assembly itself, okay? Because that's one of the things that I've gotten a lot of questions on uh, in regards to this. These right here are half inch tubing. Uh, it doesn't have half inch square tubing. It could be, you could probably use round, but your washers might not seat on it quite as well. Uh, I got a stick of this that was like two foot long or three foot long from tractor supply now the cost of steel has gone up so it'd probably be more than what i paid for it but i got this uh and i'm going to show you this so you know there you go right there that is one half inch okay now people ask how long are these arms these arms are almost 10 inches right at 10 inches and and to be honest uh you know 10 inches is plenty uh, I don't even think they would need to be 10 inches long. Uh, that's just what I did them. Uh, I just kind of cut them and tried it. 10 inches gives me enough to get this grinder all the way to the back of this cutting edge and to go forward, right? Go forward, okay? That's what I'm trying to accomplish, right? So these are, are 10 inches. Uh, these are two 10 inch pieces of half inch steel tubing, okay? Uh, there's probably other things you could use there. That's just what I got. Now, what did I do? I went into the side of this um, 4x4 with about a 4 inch long, uh, I think that's a quarter inch lag screw. So it's got, you know, it's, it's a quarter inch or a 3 eighths. It may be a 3 eighths. I think it's a quarter. And what I did is I put washers on both sides. What are those washers for? Those washers are so I can tighten it. If you look real close, those washers, they move, okay? 
so it's not so tight that you can't move it i mean i can move this 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 moves easy okay same thing here on this pivot point washer on the outside washer on the outside and several washers on the inside so they could kind of move on each other i do have a nylock nut here and the reason i have a nylock nut uh is so it will not vibrate loose uh coming up here you do have to get one of the things i did not have was a metric bolt uh, because that is metric in these grinders uh, i have the nuts here that go on them this is a i couldn't find a bolt i got another bolt somewhere but this is a m8 metric it's a m8 uh now if you're unsure this is what you do this is what i did i went into tractor supply i went back to where their bolts were i got what looked like it might fit i went over to where the grinders were and i and where this handle went in right i screwed it in there till i got the one that matched that threads all right now uh i got a bolt that was uh i want to say it was about uh, three inches long actually it's gonna be about a two and a half inch bolt uh, I screwed it into the grinder and I put a locking nut here again a washer on both sides so that it can pivot see I can move those washers and then I double nutted that so that it went back off and, and you have to check that every once in a while it will still get loose now somebody said well it's wobbly okay you can see just there is some movement in that now what could i have done i could have got bearings and put in here a bearing that sticks out uh and that way it would rotate on it okay i could have put bearings around this if i wanted to spend some more money on it and, and upgrade it and yes that would have worked uh it would have been a little bit more expensive but again i was building a prototype uh, several people have asked me how far down uh, this bolt is here again I don't think this makes much difference but from the short side of the 32 degree angle uh, to the center of that bolt looks like it's about an inch and a quarter so about an inch and a quarter down from the short side that's the high, long side of the 32 degree angles back there short sides here that's about an inch and a quarter down again if, if I had that two inches down uh, it would still work, okay? Uh, basically, what I did in, in building this is I took this and set it up here where I knew I could get to my blade, and then I determined how I needed to make these arms. I mean, it wasn't rocket science. Uh, I did not do well in geometry in high school at all, okay? All right. What I have on here is a off-brand grinder from Harbor Freight. I paid about 10 bucks for this. I use 40 grit flap disc, which I get on, you can see all that buildup off the blade around there. I get these on Amazon, get like a pack of 10 of them. Uh, I forget how much they are. They're not that expensive. Um, now, several people have told me that, hey, you need to use a stone on it. A stone would work a lot better. Uh, if you're one of those people do me a favor, uh, put me a part number down there. If you have a good stone that you use for sharpening blades, I don't I don't want just oh any stone, let's go find one on Amazon. I don't object. This is uh, what is this? What are these considered a, a four and a half inch uh, angle grinder? So whatever will fit a four and a half inch angle grinder. And I'm certainly willing to try one of those because the flap disc, I do go through quite a few of them. Uh, now I will tell you this. This is a cheap grinder. I have been using this over a year. Uh, I sharpen a lot of blades. This is only, this is not even half of my blades. And when I go through and sharpen, especially these heavy duty high lift blades, when I do about three sets, this thing gets hot. Uh, it, 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 it gets warm, okay? So, uh, again, but I have not burned it up. It still worked good. I got a couple of more of these laying around. I got a Ryobi around here. I think I even got an old Dewalt around here somewhere. So I got other ones that I could use, but th this one has just kind of done the trick for me. Uh, some improvements that you could make. Uh, one of the things that you could do, 
uh, you know, if, if you wanted to improve this a little bit, I've got a, a, a buddy on Facebook that has, uh, not on Facebook, but on YouTube that has mentioned this several times. When I, when I grind, I hold this just to kind of keep it steady. You see, I got my hand right here. Uh, it was suggested that I put this on the other side, which would mean I'd need to put this whole assembly on the back side and slide this stuff over and put the handle where I could hold it. Now, I could hold this handle like this. I could still hold the handle to give me some more control. But what I'm trying to hold is this just to keep all of this steady, okay? Now, that's a matter of preference. Uh, one of the things I did do in lining up this blade uh, with this grinder is I tried to position it. You see how I got that? Uh, I could move this in different directions if I wanted to. I could bring the grinder over this way and have a nut out here if I wanted to. But if you look, this is just about dead center of the grinding wheel. Okay, that's what I tried to accomplish. So that, that, was, that was part of my thinking there. Whether you got the arm on the left-hand side, right-hand side, whether you want to hold this, whether you want to hold this, uh, doesn't really matter, okay? Uh, just whatever works for you. So uh, I think, you know, as far as I can think of, that answers all of the questions uh, that I have gotten. Uh, you know, uh, on this product. Uh, I do want to show you one more thing real quick. That's not my Corona mask, okay? Face shield. Face shield, all right? Face shield is important. Listen. This face shield probably costs 12 or $15. But my eyes... Now, anything on my face is more valuable to me than that. This thing puts off a lot of metal, okay? You're cutting metal down. Wear your personal protective equipment, especially if you're one of those that's using a stone, okay? Um, man, if one of those things fly apart, it can put shrapnel anywhere in your face. Your eyes must be protective. And I know some of you are going to say, well, I got safety glasses. I'm just telling you. All right, safety first, okay? Uh, because if you're building one of these and you're like me and you're in business, you can't make money if you're at the doctor's office. You can't make money if you got your eye patched up and you can't go outside or you get you know you got something going on with you. Spend that few dollars, get you a good safety mask. I don't have I don't have a link or anything for this. I picked that up at at Lowe's and like I said, I probably I paid between ten twenty dollars for it. I honestly don't remember. But it's important to have one of them, okay? So, uh, again, I hope this video uh, has helped you. I will put a link in the description uh, to these clamps. I mean, you can find them anywhere. I, I'll put a link in the description to the 40 grit flap disc that I've been ordering. Um, you know, and the rest of this stuff you can go get. All the rest of this stuff I got at Tractor Supply. Uh, I didn't tell you this. These are uh, these are quarter inch uh, bolts that I got through here. Um, so you know that doesn't really matter, uh, other than the fact because of what you're dealing with is three quarter inch tubing. You got to make sure your bolt is small enough that when you drill your holes through here, that you know it's not going to come out the side. So it's 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 you know that's the only thing that you're worried about. So uh, anyway, I hope that this video has helped some of the folks that are uh, fixing to have some downtime and you want to try to build one of these over the fall or whatever and uh, I probably got $30 in it now uh, $30 with this clamp and all that but uh, anyway I still refer to it as the $25 blade sharpener you know that's kind of where I started with it uh, to be honest it's probably $30 now uh, if I had to buy the pieces of wood uh, if I didn't have wood laying all around and junk that I could use right you know but certainly for under forty dollars with the grinder flap disc uh, everything clamps uh you could be in business with it so hey big shout out to all of you that uh have already uh built one and for those of you that are maybe going to use this video to motivate you or this video is kind of a template for it uh i wish you the uh, best in trying to do that my prayer for you is always the same that the lord might richly bless you and that you might see all of your blessings as from him hope you have a great day